Hi and welcome to Elemental Pro Basic uh, webinar. My name is Ziv and I'm a web designer and lead educator here at Elemental. And I'm really excited to help you uh, use the internet's leading WordPress drag and drop site builder, Elemental. This webinar will give you a basic breakdown uh, of some of Elemental Pro's abilities by showing you how we used it to design the landing page for this specific webinar. Um, okay, so these skills can also be applied to create attractive landing pages for your own businesses uh, to help convert potential customers, such as the hospitality industry, restaurants, uh, software as a service companies, uh, gyms, uh, e-commerce, uh, and a lot more. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see the landing page that we'll be creating today. There we go. Um, okay, so this is the landing page that we're going to be creating today. I'll just scroll down and back up. So what exactly is a landing page? Uh, first of all, a landing page is a page on your site that visitors arrive on via some kind of advertising. Uh, it could be via Facebook, it could be a Google search, uh, it could be a link in an email, uh, and the page uh, is, has got a specific purpose. Okay, So the purpose is to convert uh, visitors into leads by taking a specific action. And in our example over here, um, the purpose of the page is to convince uh, the visitor, you all, everywhere around the world, uh, to save a seat for this amazing webinar. Uh, so as you can see over here, we've got uh, CTAs, call to actions, uh, to save the seat. Um, when we click on it, you automatically scroll down to the last section here to fill in the form and to save the seat. Um, here we have some uh, interesting custom positioned images with some motion effects to grab the attention. And in the middle over here, we have uh, six takeaways that you'll get from attending the webinar uh, to convince you that it's great to join this webinar. Um, so Elementor is the perfect tool to help you create uh, landing pages. Um, if you don't know, uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of what Elementor is. If you know, it will take about two minutes. Uh, it's an advanced page builder. It allows you to build entire websites page by page. Uh, with your own custom design. That's drag and drop, meaning that you work directly on the page. You see the result in real time, uh, exactly the way that the website visit, uh, visitors would see it. Uh, there are many advantages in, uh, in using Elemental Pro, such as saving time and development costs uh, with uh, access to over 50 plus Pro widgets and counting, uh, 300 Pro templates uh, that are also, uh, we're creating more and more uh, template kits, full websites uh, that help you design and build faster without using uh, code. Uh, also to help boost your landing page conversions with uh, Elemental Pro's marketing and conversion widgets. Uh, we've got a visual form builder with built-in integrations, which we're going to be using uh, for this webinar. And uh, powerful animations that bring your site to life. Uh, we also have a design-oriented uh, design pop-up builder uh, for Pro users uh, that you can also integrate with your favorite marketing tools. And there's so much more. Uh, so I'll stop babbling and uh, I'll just let you know that uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, we'll try to answer them and I'm going to be pausing every now and then to, uh, to, to answer some questions. Okay, so to start working with Elementor, you need to create your first page. So what I'll do over here, I'll go to pages in the dashboard and click add new. And I'll give it a name. call it landing page pro webinar like so and then I'll go ahead and uh, hit edit with Elementor and in order to start with a clean page I'll go to the page settings uh, in the left on the bottom and I'll choose page layout and I'll set that to canvas okay so this is the easiest way to create a full blank page without a header and a footer, exactly what we need for uh, our landing page. Uh, so let's just have a quick overview of, uh, of Elementor and the interface. On the right side over here is the editing area. This is where we're gonna be adding and editing the elements uh, that form the page, the layout of the page. And on the left side over here is the Elementor panel. If we click over here on the widgets icon, uh, we have the creative tools, these are the widgets. Uh, you can use them to add them to your page. You can add headings, uh, paragraphs, images, and videos. Uh, and a lot more and you can always access this area by clicking on the right uh, on the uh, icon uh, widget icon on the right over here um, and another thing that we have is global widgets okay this is for pro users 
Uh, and with this uh, uh, feature, you can save a widget as a, a global widget. And then you can add it to multiple areas on your site. Uh, and you can, uh, all the areas will be editable from that single space. Uh, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that when we're going to be creating our last section with the form widget. And uh, so I'll show you that uh, later on. If we look over here, we have uh, the hamburger menu on the left. Uh, there are a lot of options over here, like setting your default colors. We go back over here and default fonts, which I'll set later as well. Uh, we can also view the page and we can exit back to our dashboard. Um, at the bottom over here, we have uh, some other settings. We already spoke about the page settings over here. Um, we also have the navigator, okay, which will help us uh, get a clear understanding of the page and uh, the layout and everything that's in it. It's empty right now because we haven't created anything. So we're going to come back to this and we'll see exactly how it's going to help us uh, uh, create uh, our page. Um, okay. Let's have a look. Let's carry on to the history. Over here we can see all of the uh, actions that we made, all the edits and everything. We can go back to them. Uh, we can also check out the revisions. Over here we have the responsive mode. Uh, here we can switch between the screen modes and we can, uh, for example, go to mobile and make mobile edits, tablet and make tablets, uh, tablet edits. We'll, uh, go, we'll do that uh, soon as well. And over here we can preview the page uh, and we can of course publish and there are other save options as well which we'll go over uh, soon. Okay, so let's take a closer look at how pages are built. There are two ways that we can start. Uh, we can, I'm going to start off with a library so we'll just click over here and um, as you can see over here we can uh, preview, we we'll just click on the magnifying glass here, we can preview pre-made blocks uh, and pages over here and um, also our own templates and we can just simply insert them into the page okay so I'll go ahead and choose uh, let's have a look I'll choose the get in touch I'll choose this pro block our power in numbers I'll go ahead and just insert that and as you can see we straight away we've got a block with uh, some content in it with some widgets uh, so let's just have a look exactly what we have over here okay so Elementor uses three main building blocks we have the sections we have the columns and we have the widgets you can identify the columns uh, sorry uh, we can identify the section by the blue line okay and they are the biggest they are the biggest building blocks then we have the columns uh, you can identify them by the black dashed border over here there's one over here and inside them we have uh, we have the widgets okay as a heading widget over here is a countdown widget uh, and we can control all of these uh, uh, columns and sections and widgets uh, with their handle for example we can right click and duplicate uh, the section and we can just delete it like so we can also duplicate the column so now we have two columns with the same content in it and I'll go ahead and just delete this and what we can also do is we can move the columns and the widgets uh, and the sections around so by simply dragging and dropping. So I'll just drag this column over here. And if I'd like to duplicate the section and remove this, I can drag this section down over here. Let's see below. The blue line indicates where it's going to be positioned, right? OK, so let's have a closer look at the section columns and the widgets. Um, they have three tabs. I'll go ahead and click section. They have three tabs in the panel on the left. Uh, the section and the columns, they have uh, layout, style, and advanced tabs. And widgets, they have content, style, and advanced tabs. Um, so soon we'll see exactly how these settings are uh, used to create our landing page. But first, I'll go ahead and delete the section because we're going to be building it from scratch. Okay, so another way to add a section is by pressing the plus icon. So I'll go ahead and press the plus icon. And then you can simply choose one of the preset structures. Uh, so you can choose them and you can later on you can tweak them as well. Uh, so I think it's time to uh, start building our landing page. Uh, so let's just have a look. This is our landing page. That's what we're going to be building. And I'll start off in this page settings. Okay. And what I'll do over here is I'm going to give it a background color, the whole page. Okay, so I'll go to style and I'll choose background type classic and I'll give it a color. I'll just paste my code over here. I'll give it a, gr a gray background color. Okay, so 
Now I can add sections and I can start building, but I don't need to give them a background color, the sections, because I, I gave the page settings uh, a background color. So that will save me some time. Um, okay, great. Uh, the next thing that I'll do, also to speed up my process, is I'll go to the hamburger menu over here and I'll go to the default fonts. Remember I mentioned it before, over here I set the, all the fonts, I set them to Roboto. Okay, this will save me also some time when I add uh, uh, heading widgets and stuff like that. They'll be set as default, which we'll see soon. Okay, great. So for the first section, let's have a look over here. This is the first section. Um, as you can see, we have two columns over here, and we can already see a little bit of the, 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 the second section over here, giving us some interest to read about the takeaways. Okay, so how exactly can we uh, create that layout and set that up? So for the first section, I'm going to create a section with two columns and I'm going to control the height. Okay, so I'm going to control uh, the height of the section and I'm going to give it a minimum height, meaning that the section will be at least this height. Uh, no matter the amount of content in it, it will be at least uh, this height. The default setting is 400, so I can increase it uh, in pixels, but I'm going to use a different uh, unit. I'm going to use a relative unit called VH, view height which is in relationship to the viewport's height. So 100%, 100 VH means that it takes up 100% of the viewport's height, which you can see over here. Um, 50 VH would mean it would take up half of the viewport's height. And I'm going to be setting it to 80, so that when my second section starts, uh, you already see it above the fold, which will be uh, come in handy for our landing page. Okay, so let's move on. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'll go to style and I'll give it a background image. Okay, so I'll go to background type and I'll I'll use this uh, white quarter circle. Okay, so I'll use this circle over here and I'll go ahead and insert it. And I'm going to fix this. First of all, I'm going to set it uh, to no repeat, no repeat. So we only see it once. And then I'll set it position. I'll set it to top center. Okay, great. Um, that's where I, I want to have it. Uh, next, what I'm going to be doing is I'll drag an image widget. So I'll go to the widgets here, drag an image widget into the left column. And I'm going to be choosing the Elemental logo. So I'll go here and just choose the Elemental logo, like so. Um, and I'll align it to the left. And in Style, I'm going to control the width. I'll just make it just a little bit uh, smaller, 25%. That's great. And uh, I'll, I'll use a CSS filter. So I want this color now. I want it to be dark. I want it to be black. But I don't want to create a new logo and in Photoshop and then upload it and whatever not. So I'll just use a CSS filter over here to save some time. And I'll just bring the brightness all the way down. So now it's dark. Okay, so that's great. Um, and the next thing that I'll do is I'll drag, I'll go ahead to the widgets and I'll search for the icon list the icon list widget and I'll drop it here under the elemental logo and I'll go ahead and delete two list items so I'm left with one and what I'll do is I'll click on it and I'll change the text I'll change the text over here to the webinar and the date and the time so in text I'll go ahead and change that that's great and now I'll, I'll hover over the uh, over the icon and I'll choose upload SVG I've uploaded some uh, SVGs, um, so what I'll go uh, uh, and do is choose this live S uh, SVG icon over here and insert it. And now we need to style uh, style it a bit, so I'll go to style and I'm going to increase uh, the icon. Okay, so I'll go to icon drop down, excuse me, I'll go to icon drop down and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and change the size to I'll go ahead and set it to 60. Okay, that's great. Now I'll style the text. So I'll go to the text drop down. I'll change the text color to black. And the text indent I'll set to 16 to create some space there between. And over here, remember when I set the default uh, font family Roboto. So the family here is set to default. So it automatically set to uh, Roboto. Uh, so it will save me some time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just change it to 22 pixels. And I'll set the weight to uh, 500, so it's a little bit bolder. Okay, great. Um, next, what I'll do is I'll drag in a heading widget. I'll drag a heading widget under 
under this text. And what I'll do is I'll I'll just change the text over here. Okay, this is my text. Create your first landing page with Elementor Pro. And uh, as you can see, I added break lines over here. So landing page will always appear under Create Your First and with Elemental Pro will always appear uh, under landing page. So that's uh, a, something that you can use. Um, next I'll style it. So I'll go to Style and I'll change the color to black. And over here I'll go to Typography and I'll choose uh, the font family. Also here's uh, Roboto, it's applied automatically. This will be 70 and I'll add a decoration over here. I'll set it to underline and I'll play around with the line height. I'll change the line height to pixels and I'll set it at 80. And the letter spacing here, I'll drop down a bit to bring it together. I'll do a negative four. Okay, that's great. Um, so now we can move on to our button. This is our CTA, okay? So I'll go ahead and drop this button over here and I'll change the text. And in text, I'll go ahead and choose save my seat. And um, what we're gonna be doing is we'll set the link to automatically scroll down to the third section, which contains the form and we haven't created it yet. So I'll show you uh, exactly how to do that later on. Uh, but first let's style the button. So I go to style and in uh, typography, I'll go and set the family to Montserrat. I'll set the size to 16 and the weight to bold uh, 600 and then I'll set transform to uppercase on buttons. It's always good to have the uppercase going um, and Let's have a look. I'll play around with the letter spacing a bit. I'll space it out just a little bit like so That's cool and Next what I'll do is I'll change the background color. Okay, so I'll go ahead and set uh, a pink red background color so I go to background color over here and I'll change that like so. And now I'm going to change. Uh, I'm going to change the shape to a pill shape. So I'll add. Uh, I'll add some uh, border radius. I'm going to go for 50 pixels all around, as you can see over here. And what I want to do is I'm going to unlink the padding values because I want to set custom padding over here. So when I remove it, it's, there's no padding whatsoever. And what I'll do is I'll set it to 20 on the top and 20 on the bottom and 35 on the right and 35 on the left. Okay, so that's exactly what I, what I like, uh, which is great. And now the only thing that I wanna do with the button still is uh, on hover, when you hover over the button, I wanna change the background color to, uh, to this nice green. So I'll go ahead and choose background color. There we go. So now when I hover over it, it changes. And to, to grab the attention, also I wanna add a hover animation. So I'll go ahead and choose grow. So this is nice, it pops out nicely. Okay, that's great. And now I wanna create some space between the text and the button. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to advanced in the button and I'll unlink the padding values, okay? And I'm gonna change the unit from pixels, I'm gonna change it to percentage because this is a relative unit and it's better for responsive design. It's better for tablet and mobile. Um, so what I'll do over here is I'll add 5% 5% padding on the top and that's it. Um, now let's have a look at our page. So you can see the Elementor logo over here pops a little bit out. Uh, the way that I did that is I'm going to select, I'm going to select the logo. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to play around with the margin. I'm going to give it a negative margin. Okay. So I can unlink the margin and I'm going to give it a negative margin on top. The moment that you give it a negative margin, you can see it comes up and then it comes out of the, the column itself. Okay, so I need to pay attention to this. Now it's out of the column. Uh, we'll soon see also in mobile how that affects the mobile. But that's, uh, that's how I got it out. Uh, so that's great. Now let's move on to the column on the right. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dragging, um, I'm going to be dragging an image widget into the right over here. Okay. And I'm going to be choosing a very special picture. There we go. 
and I'll go ahead and insert that. And I'll just go ahead and make sure that the size is set to full. And what I'll do next is I'll drag an image widget. Sorry, I'll drag a heading widget under it. There we go. And I'll change the text. Okay, I'll change the text. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll style it. So I'll go to style and I'll change the color to black. And in typography, I'll go ahead and set it to search for and set it to Montserrat. I'll set it to 20 pixels. And I'll make it a little bit, uh, I'll change the weight to 500. And now in order to position it exactly where we like, okay, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be going to uh, add the advanced settings here as well. And I'll unlink the padding. Like before, I'll change the unit to percentage. Um, and I'll just add a little bit. Let's see. I'll just move it over here. 25% is nice. That's great. Okay, next, I'm going to be duplicating this. And I'll change the text. Okay, great. And I'll change the text color. I'll change it to gray. So I'll go to style. And I'll change the text color over here. I'll change it to gray. And I'll make it a little bit lighter. So I'll go to weight and I'll set it to 300. So now it's a little bit lighter. And in order to move it uh, closer to the first heading, uh, what I'll do here is I'll also go to advanced and I'll unlink, this time I'll unlink the margin, okay, which is above, it's outside the, the widget. I'll unlink that and I'll change it to the value, uh, the unit to percentage and I'll give it a negative margin of 2%, negative top margin of 2%. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, now for the shapes. Okay, as you can see here, we have the shapes. Uh, we used custom positioning and we used uh, motion effects. Okay, so let's see exactly how, uh, how we do that. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm going to be dragging in an image widget. So I'll drag an image widget over here. And I'll go ahead and change it to uh, the big black semicircle. Okay, so this one. And I'll insert it like so. And next, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and duplicate the image. And the second image, I'll uh, choose the red square and the black semicircle. Okay, so that's these two. And in order to uh, position them next to each other, what we can do is we can use the positioning option in advanced. So I'll go ahead and select this uh, image. And in advanced, as you can see, we have a positioning option. Okay. I'd like to, uh, uh, in advance, uh, warn you that custom position itself, it's not considered a best practice for responsive web design uh, and also shouldn't be used too frequently. Uh, but for this, for landing pages to create the interaction and to, to really position things uh, the way that you like, it's a, it's a very good solution. Um, so what we do is, what we'll do now is go to a width and basically we'll set it to inline. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do it to the second one as well, go to advanced, I'll go to positioning, and I'll go to width, and I'll set it to inline, and now they're next to each other, okay? And we can position them even more accurately by setting the position itself to absolute, okay? So I'll go ahead and select this first image, and I'll set the position to absolute. And the moment that I set the position to absolute, you can see that the second image jumped to the left. This is because the moment that I set the black semicircle to absolute, uh, it, it essentially was removed from the flow of the elements on the page. Um, so I'll go ahead and select the second image. Okay. And I'll go to positioning. Sorry, the second image. There we go. And I'll change the position to absolute as well. So now they're both, they're both removed from the flow of the, of the, the elements on the page. Um, and we can play around with them. We can play around with the position. So what I want to do is I want to have the, squ the square semicircle. So I select it over here. I wanted to have it in the top right corner uh, of the image and the black uh, semicircle. Sorry, I want the, the square semicircle uh, in the top right and I want the black semicircle uh, circle in the top left. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, select the square semicircle first over here um, and I'll go, I'll go to the horizontal orientation and 
I'll set it to right. Okay, and I'll leave the vertical orientation at the top because that's where I want to have it. Now I can position it uh, accurately with the offset. Okay, what I'll do is I'll change the unit to percentage because it's a relative unit and it's relative to the column that it's in, which will help us uh, later on if we're uh, creating for tablet and creating for mobile, it's a, it's a better way to design. Um, so what I'll do over here, as you can see, the moment that I move it, we can uh, we can place it over here. So I want to place it, I want to place it over here so I can place it quite accurately. And for the vertical orientation, I want it to go up a bit. There we go. So that's great. Um, now let's go to the black semicircle. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to I want it to remain uh, at the top left. And all I need to do over here is I'll just change the units to percentage as well. And I'll slide over here. I'll slide this a little bit to the right. That's great. And the offset, I wanted to bring it up a bit. So I'll go over here. And I think that looks great. Um, also, if you want them to come back to their uh, original position, all you need to do is just set the offsets to zero. Okay, so if you get lost, if you're playing around, something happens, um, you might get confused if the image suddenly just disappeared. Uh, always just use this, the offset, set them back to zero and you, you're good to go. Um, so I'll just go ahead and set this back to what I had before. Okay, so this was nine and this was, hold on, delete this, it was negative nine. Okay, that's great. And um, also, there's a great tutorial that I made that explains exactly how uh, to use uh, custom pos uh, absolute positioning, custom positioning when you're designing your page. Uh, so I'll send a, a link uh, in the description as well, so you can uh, check that out. Um, okay, great. So now that we've got these uh, images, let's bring them to life with motion effects. Okay, so we'll select the top left image, and I'll go ahead and go in advanced. I'll go to motion effects. Okay, and here I'll choose mouse effects. And I'll choose mouse track, okay, so that uh, basically, as you can see, when I interact with it with my mouse, it moves around. So the direction is set to opposite, meaning that when I move in a certain direction, you can see that the image itself moves against me in the opposite direction. And I'll control the speed over here. I'll bring it down a bit because I want it to be a subtle, I want it to be a subtle interaction. So that's great. And for the top right image, I'll go ahead and select it and go to motion effects and I'll switch on mouse effects, mouse track, and I'll change the direction. I'll change it to direct. Direct means that it follows me within the direction that I'm going. That's where the, the image also uh, uh, moves towards and I'll make it subtle as well. So I'll bring this down. So as you can see now, they, there's a subtle, there's a nice playful interaction between uh, the two uh, elements over here. Um, okay, great. So, now let's create the other two on the bottom over there and we'll just simply duplicate. We'll duplicate these and, and drag them down. Okay, so you can see them. And the black semicircle, I'm going to change it to the, the white semicircle and the red circle, this one. Okay, and, and what I'll do is I'll go to advanced and in positioning, I'll set the vertical orientation to bottom because that's where I want to uh, position it. And I'll make sure that the percentages are set to, uh, that the units are set to percentage. And over here, I'll, I'll set this to seven and I'll set this to 18. Great. And I'll select the next image. And here as well, I'll change this image to the white triangle and uh, the red, uh, this red, uh, say, uh, a quarter circle. I'll go ahead and insert that. And in advanced, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go to, I'll go to uh, positioning and I'll change the vertical orientation to bottom as well. I'll make sure that it's set to percentage and I'll go ahead and set my values here, my offset values. Um, so that's exactly where I want it to be positioned. Um, and to change the interaction a bit, I'm going to go to the left image on the bottom over here and change motion effects, mouse track uh, to direct. And I'll do the opposite over here for the right, the, the image on the right, on the bottom, 
and I'll change the mouse track, I'll change it to opposite. Okay, so this really gives us this playful, subtle interaction um, that you uh, that really it, it's nice uh, for the visitor to uh, to see. Um, also, I'll link another tutorial in the description that covers all of the motion effects options, okay, because there are so many more there's so many uh, more uh, motion effects options, so you can really get a basic understanding of how it works and how you can use it to uh, liven up your own pages. Uh, for example, uh, you know you could use this on a restaurant website. You can add uh, custom positioned uh, menu items with motion effects, you know, to grab the attention. Um, so that's that could be a creative way to uh, to apply it. Um, okay, great. So we finished with the first section. Uh, let's see if we have some questions over here. Okay, so I've got a question from Corey. When editing on different devices, uh, do the changes only apply to that device or does it make changes for all? So that's uh, the mobile responsive modes, which we're gonna be doing uh, soon as well. Um, you, can, uh, you can basically create, you can make mobile edits for specific devices. So you can make a, 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 a different font size uh, for mobile and on tablet will be a bigger font size and uh, there's a lot of things that you can change uh, for, for all of the, the mobile devices. Uh, I'll show it to you. I'll show you exactly how we can uh, make some mobile edits to make this page look great on mobile as well. I hope that answers the question. Okay, so we've got a question from Kila. Um, are those elements SVG or PNG? Uh, okay, so it's PNG, but it doesn't matter because you can work with, uh, with both file types uh, in Elementor, so that's great. Um, Okay, great, so let's carry on with the second uh, section, right? Let's have a look at our second section over here. As you can see, that's the six takeaways uh, that you'll get from attending the webinar. Okay, so let's make a start. So first of all, what I'll do is uh, I'll add a section with one column, okay? And I'll give it a min height of 60 VH as you can see over here. And in style, background type, I'll go ahead and choose an image. I'll choose the this uh, circle and some other shapes uh, background image. And what I'll do is I'll set it to, like before, no repeat, so it appears only once. And I'll position it in the top center, like so. And next what I'll do is I'll drag in uh, the heading widget. Okay, so I'll go ahead and drag in the heading widget and I'll change the text. This is gonna be the text, uh, the six takeaways. So I'll go ahead and add that here. As you can see, I added a break line as well um, so that from attending the webinar will always appear under the six takeaways you'll get. What I'll do is I'll align it to the center and in style, I'll change the color to black, okay? Great, now typography, I'm going to change this to Montserrat and I'll change the size to 50 so it's bigger and I'll play around with the line height, okay? I'll set it to pixels and I'll just space it a bit over here. That looks great. And the next thing that I'll do is I'll add some, sp uh, some uh, padding on the bottom over here so that uh, when we add our other elements, there'll be some space uh, between them. So I'll go to advanced and what I'll do is I'll unlink the padding over here, change it to percentage because it's better for responsive. And on the bottom, I'll go ahead and add, as you can see here, I'll add 4%. That's great. Okay, next. Next, I'll drag in an intersection, okay? so. I'm dragging in the inner section over here. As you can see, we have got the main section and we've got an inner section. The default comes with two columns, okay? Um, I'm gonna add another column. So I'll right click here and uh, I'll go ahead and choose add new column. So I've got three in total. And what I'll do is I'll search for the icon, uh, the icon box widget, okay? Icon box, there we go. Okay, so I'll drag it in. And what I'll be doing over here is I'm going to be uploading the S an SVG for this, okay? So I'll go ahead and choose this and I'll choose this SVG and I'll go ahead and uh, insert that like so. And 
I'm going to be deleting the title and I'll only add a description. Okay, so let's just do this. I won't need I won't need the title. I'll just use a description. So that's great. And now can, now we can style it. So I'll go to style and I'll change the icon size. I'll change the size. I'll increase it a bit. Uh, it's too big. Let's bring it down a bit. 60. That's great. And the content drop down uh, in description uh, because we deleted the title. We're not using it in description. I'm going to go and set the color to black. And in typography, I'll go ahead and choose uh, Montserrat and I'll set it to 18. Um, and that's great. Okay, so now I want, uh, I will, I'll copy, I'll copy and I'll paste the icon box widget. I'll just go ahead and paste this so we got three in a row. And I want to have six in total, right? As you can see over here, we want to have six in total. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate the intersection. So I've got two intersections. And all we need to do now is change uh, the texts and the images. So the first one we already set. So I'll go to the second one. Um, and I'll go ahead and just add this text. And I'll select the SVG over here. And let's move on to the third one. As you can see, it's very easy. Just copy paste. That's great. Now we choose the SVG. That's cool. Now the fourth one. Learn to design stunning landing pages without code. And we'll change we'll change this to this cool SVG icon. Um, We'll change this one over here. Discover how to make your page 100% responsive, which we'll do soon. Uh, and I'll go ahead and choose the responsive mobile and tablet icon. And for our last one, uh, preview and publish pages, uh, your pages to a live website. Great. And I'll change this SVG icon over here to this nice preview icon. Cool. And now what I want to do is I want to create some space between these intersections. So what I'll do is in the first intersection, I'll go to advanced and I'll unlink the margin because I want to, to add space under the, the intersection. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll change this to a percentage like before. There we go. And on the bottom, I'll just add 2%. Okay. That's cool. Now, I want to bring all of this content, I want to bring it a little bit together, okay, inside the main section over here. So what I'll do is I'll just select uh, the section and uh, in advanced, I'll unlink the padding and I'll change it to percentage and I'll just give it, no, I won't unlink, I'll, I'll just give it 3% all around. Okay, so as you can see over here, if I increase it, it increases like so. I just leave it at 3%, so that's great. Uh, and that's our second section, okay? So let's see if we've got any questions. Let's see. Um, okay, so from Suzanne, where can I find those icons and images to use? Are they somewhere in Elementor or do I have to search at uh, stock photo websites? Okay, so we're going to be sharing all of the materials that we used in this uh, webinar. We're going to be uh, sending it to you so you can rewatch the webinar and recreate the website and uh, use the skills to apply it to your, to your own uh, designs. Um, let's see, any other questions here? Let's see. From San Sandia. How do I add elemental navigation and not have the WordPress navigation as the primary navigation? Uh, okay, in order to do this, uh, you use Elemental's theme builder. We have a tutorial about it. So I'll also send a link in the description um, uh, when the video is on the, on the channel. Okay, great. So let's move on to our third and final uh, section. Okay, so let's have a look at it. This is gonna be our form, uh, our form section. 
So let's just build it. I'll go ahead and hit the plus over here like before. I'll add a section with two columns. I control its height, set a min height of 70 VH, okay? And I'm gonna choose a background image. So in style, choose a background type and I'll choose image. And I'll choose this uh, little red square. I'll go ahead and insert it. And now, like before, no repeat. There we go, we got the little red square back. And in position, uh, I'll go ahead and set it to center right. So it appears over there in the center on the right. Um, so that's great. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy the main heading in the first section and I'll simply paste it over here. And what I'll do is I'll also copy this icon list widget and I'll paste it here as well. Okay. Now the heading widget, I'll go ahead and change the text. This is going to be the save your C text, uh, the big save your C text. So I'll go ahead and change that. Um, and in style, I'll go ahead and change the topography. I'll increase it a lot. I'll, I'll make it 120 pixels and I'll remove this underline in decoration. I'll set it back to default and I'll play around with the line height here to bring some space. I'll, 90 pixels is good. And um, the next thing that I'll do is I'll create some space between these two widgets. So in the heading widget, I'll go to advanced and I'll unlink the padding and I'll set it to percentage. And on the bottom, I'll add 8%. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to create some white space on the right side of, uh, of the column. Okay, so in order to do that, um, what I'll do over here is I'll go to the column settings, okay, and in advanced, I'll unlink the padding and I'll change it to percentage. And what I'll do is I'll add 15% on the top. I'll leave the bottom as is and I'll add 15% on the right. As you can see, the moment that I do that, uh, the text the, the letters, they all the numbers, the, the words, they all appear below each other. And uh, we've got this nice white space over here. So that's great. So um, now we can move on to uh, the form widgets in the right column. So I'll go ahead and search for form widget. There we go. And this is our, uh, our awesome form widget that we can style to our liking. Uh, as, as you can see, we've got the name, email, and message. I'm going to keep the name. I'm going to keep the email. Um, First of all, I'm going to just give this form a name so I, I know what form this is. Okay, so I'll give the form name, um, create your first L uh, landing page webinar. And next, what I'll do is I'll go to messages and I'll change the placeholder text. Okay, so in placeholder, as you can see, what are your expectations from the webinar? That's the placeholder text. And I'll change the default four rows, I'll change it to three. So that was four. This is three, three, so it's a little bit less. And I'll go ahead and add an item, and I'll change the type. I'll change it to text area, so you, where you can fill in your answers. And I'll go ahead and change this this placeholder text. How long have you been using Elementor? Okay, and I'll change this to three as well. And I'll just increase the size, the input size. I'll just make it medium, so it's a little bit bigger. Everything. And I'll hide the label. I don't want to see the label. I want to hide the labels. So I'll do that over there. And next, let's go to the submit button. Okay, so I'll go to the submit button drop down and I'll change the text. I wanted to say save my seat. So I'll go ahead and paste this save my seat. Uh, that's great. And I'll align it to the left. Okay, I'll align the button to the left. And uh, we have uh, actions after submit. Okay, so after you uh, after you or your visitors uh, press the button, you can add some actions. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, adding Mailchimp over here. The moment that you add Mailchimp, you get a Mailchimp drop down where you can choose your API key and your audience. Uh, I'll link another video in the description as well uh, that basically goes over how you can use these email marketing platforms together with Elementor Pro's uh, integration settings. Um, and uh, you'll understand also how that works with uh, in the additional options, uh, the form ID, 
uh, and uh, you can switch on a custom message as well. Uh, so there will be a link about that uh, as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and style the form. Okay, so I'll go to style and I'll just increase the row gap a little bit like so. And I'll go to the field drop down now and I'll change I'll change the text color to just a little bit more gray, a little bit darker. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll just make it a little bit darker. Okay, let's just change that. Okay, that didn't work. Field, text color. Okay. There we go. Okay, so change the color. And um, in typography, what I'll do over here is I'll, I'll go to letter spacing and I'll increase it a little bit to stretch it out. Okay, I want it to be stretched out just a little bit, not too much, so 1.2. And what I'll do now is I will remove the border. So I'll just set the border to zero, so there's no border. And I'll create a pill shape. Uh, I'll just add a border radius of 25 pixels to creating this uh, pill shape. Um, so that's that and uh, now what I'll do is I'll go to the button drop down and I'll change the button uh, background color I'll change it to the red the, the pink red okay and um, next what I'll do is I'll go to the typography and I'll select set it to Montserrat set the size to 16 uh, I'll set the weight to 600 so a little bit bolder and transform to uppercase um, next I'll play around a little bit with the line height okay so I'll go ahead and set it to that's a, that's about right and a letter spacing I'll space it out as well not too much that's great um, and the next thing what we'll do is we'll turn the button also into this pill shape. So I'll go to the, uh, the border radius and I'll give it 50 pixels all around. And next what I want to do is I want to create some custom padding over here. So the text padding, what I'll do is uh, I'll just unlink all, all of the values and I'll go ahead and set, I'll set it to 15 on the top, 15 on the bottom, 35 on the right and 35 on the left. And now what I'll do is I'll go to the right column settings over here. And in advanced, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll unlink the padding and I'll set it to percentage. And what I'll do is I'm going to be just like we did it with uh, the, sec the, the column in the left. We had created some white space. I'll be creating some white space here as well. Um, so what I'll do over here is I'll set to 15 on top. 15 on the right, 15 on the bottom, and on the right side of, sorry, and on the left side, I'll just leave it uh, at zero because I wanted to stay close to the column's edge. Okay, great. So as I told you before, we can save uh, widgets as global widgets. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to save this form widget as a global widget. So I'll just go ahead and right click uh, the form widget and I'll choose save as global. And I'll just, I'll just say form widget like so and I'll just save it and now as you can see it appears in a, a global um, it appears in the global part of, uh, of your widgets um, which means that you can easily use it when you're creating uh, different uh, landing pages um, okay great so now that we finished that uh, what we need to do of course is we need to set the button in the first section to scroll down all the way to the third section okay so what we're going to be doing is we'll go to the third section settings because we wanted to scroll to the third section and um, what we will do is we'll go to advanced in advanced over here we're going to be adding a CSS ID okay and I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll simply go back to the button in the in the first section in content link Make sure that you paste this uh, the CSS ID after the pound key. Make sure that there's a pound key over there. And the moment you do that, when you press it, it will automatically scroll down to that section. Um, so that's really cool. 
Um, now that we've created we've created so much uh, stuff on our page, I'll now just pour some water. All right. Now that we have uh, created a lot of content, a lot of sections, a lot of columns, a lot of widgets, it's time to open up our navigator. So I'll go ahead and press the navigator, and as you can see, it's full of stuff right now. I'll go ahead and minimize uh, the sections, the columns, the widgets. Uh, as you can see, there are three sections, okay? So I can use the navigator to uh, really get an, a, a quick overview of what's going on over here, and I can really organize it as well. I can give it a name, okay? So I can, I can call this hero by double clicking, I can call this, uh, this was the takeaways, right? And the third one was uh, form, so the form section. Uh, and when I press on it, it automatically scrolls to that section. That's great. And I can go ahead and select a column and it will automatically bring me to that column in the column settings. So that's really, really awesome. Uh, also, we added some custom positioned uh, images and some motion effects. and. In, in, in the Pro Navigator, what you can see is, you can see these blue lines over here indicating that there are motion effects and custom positioned uh, images. So you can get a real clear overview of things that you've created and things that you've done uh, and to, to work with that uh, accordingly. So I'll go ahead and close that. And right now, uh, let's move on to the uh, responsive, uh, responsive modes for the mobile and tablet because a lot of potential customers, they, they will view this page on their mobile devices. Um, so so let's have a look uh, exactly how uh, how we can make responsive adjustments to make your design look uh, great on mobile as well. So for this webinar, I'm going to be tweaking the first section to, to show you exactly how it works. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to be starting with the responsive mode. I'll go to tablet. So this might be something that you have already done or, or, or might not have used, but something that I like to use a lot for uh, creating layouts and organizing um, the composition for tablet and mobile modes is using the column width uh, percentage. So I'll go ahead and choose uh, the column width, the column setting over here. As you can see, there's the column width. And over here, I can simply change this. I can change it to 60, so it's a little bit, takes up more space. And of course, it needs to be 100% to take up the full width. So I'll just change this to 40. And as you can see, you can very quickly just uh, change the, the layout over here to suit your uh, mobile device. So I'll go ahead and delete these because I'm not going to be using it. Let's have a look. There we go. And let's open up the mobile mode now. And I'll open up the navigator as well so it will help us. Um, I'll go ahead and select the hero section. So I'm straight away in uh, the section settings. And um, I'll just show you some advanced responsive settings over here. So I'll go to advanced, responsive. And uh, one of the things that we can do is we can uh, reverse the columns. So reverse on mobile. As you can see, the first column here has got the text. The second column over here has got the image. So the moment that I reverse it, the second column and the, and the, and the, the first column, they're switched. Okay, so I'll switch it back because I won't be uh, using that. And what we can also do is we can hide the whole section, the entire section, we can hide it on mobile. Um, by click by simply pressing visibility hide on mobile as you can see it's grayed out at the moment that I uh, I hide the panel over here you can see that uh, the first section doesn't show on mobile uh, which is uh, could come in handy when you're creating specific sections that you want to have visible on only desktop only tablet only mobile so you can really uh, create that experience uh, for your visitors and I'll go ahead and uh, and not not use that because um, we'll just carry on over here making some tweaks for, uh, for our mobile. Uh, first of all, if you have noticed, uh, the Elemental logo is out of sight. That's because we gave it a negative top margin uh, in desktop mode. Remember before? Uh, so what you set in desktop mode, it's automatically applied here by default. So in order to bring it back, what we'll do is, it's in the first column, that's what I know, and it is an image. Okay, so I know that it's over here. and what I'll do is I'll just go to content just to confirm, but I know that this is the logo, uh, the Elemental logo. So I go to advanced, and the moment that I unlink the margin, because I set a negative margin uh, in the desktop mode, the moment that I unlink it, it won't get that negative 100 margin and it will come back to its, uh, its uh, original place over here. So as you can see, we've got the, the, the logos back. And uh, let's go ahead and style it a bit. So in style, 
and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna change the width. As you can see, there are responsive handles over here. So they indicate that uh, these settings can be used for responsive editing. Okay, you can see tablet, desktop. So these are specific only for, um, only for, uh, for, for, for the mobile right now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and increase that. I'll set that to 40. And I'll align it to the center. I'll go to content and align it to the center over here. And next I'll select the icon list widget. And in list, I'll also align it to the center. And in style, in list, align it to the center, yes. And then text, I'll go ahead and increase it a bit. Okay, so I'll go ahead to typography and I'll decrease it, I'll make it smaller. Okay, great. Um, the next thing that I'll do is I'll uh, create some space between them. So I'll go to advanced and I'll add some padding on the top. So I'll unlink the padding, I'll change it to percentage and on top, I'll just add, I'll add 5%. Next, I'll go to the heading widget, it's too big. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, first of all, in content, I'll align it to the center and in style, I'll just go ahead and change the size to 36 pixels and I'll change the line height as well. I'll change it, change it to pixels and I'll change it to 48. That's cool. And the letter spacing I'll bring down a bit to bring it together. There we go, negative two. Um, okay, cool. And what I'll do here is also I'll add some spacing. So I'll go to advanced and I'll unlink the padding, set it to percentage and on top, I'll give it 2%. Great, now let's move on to the button widget. Um, what I'll do is I'll align it to the center and in advanced, I'll unlink the padding as well. <laughs> a lot of unlinking. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. I'll change it to five. I'll change it to percent, and I'll give it five percent on the top, and I'll give it five percent on the bottom as well. Okay, great. So now let's have a look at the custom positioned images. Okay, so I, I actually I don't want them to show on uh, on on the mobile mode. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'll select them and I'll just go to advanced and I'll go to positioning. Uh, sorry, I'll go to uh, responsive and I'll simply select hide on mobile and now it's grayed out. So I'll go and do that uh, over here. Let's have a look. Hide on mobile. I'll select this one as well. Responsive. Hide on mobile. And the last one. Hide on mobile. So the moment that I hide the panel, you can see that these uh, custom positioned images, they, they don't show up, okay? Um, okay, so that's great. Now let's have a look at, let's move on to the image. Okay, so I'll use the navigator to, uh, to find my image over here. Let's have a look, there we go. Okay, we can see that's the image. I can also give it a name you know, in the navigator so I can find it back easily. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, and let's, uh, let's change some things for the image over here. So I'll go ahead in style, I'll change the width. I'll change it to 60. And I'll go to the section settings over here. I'll go back to the section settings. And I'll go to uh, style and I'll go to background and I'll just change the position over here I'll change it to uh, top right okay and I'll change the size uh, of the background image as well because uh, the white uh, it's the, 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 the quarter circle is a little bit too big so I'll just uh, I'll go ahead in size I'll choose custom okay and pay attention that these are all uh, mobile specific right this is what we only see on mobile so I'll choose custom and over here I'll simply I'll set it I'll set it to 50 okay 50 is cool okay great so now we're almost done 
I just want to add some space on top over here. So I'll go to the section settings and uh, I'll go to advanced and I'll, for the last time, <laughs> unlink the padding over here and I'll change it to percentage and on top, I'll just give it 5%. Um, and that's great. This is, this is what we've got for mobile. Okay, so let's take some questions over here. Ah, yes, I'd like to remind you that the webinar will be av available on the channel so you can re uh, you can watch it again. Uh, so no worries. If you missed something, you can uh, check it out again, go back uh, and scroll along. Um, why? OK, so Cam Spot uh, Puntanel, Oi Nederland, uh, has got a question. Why do you put the margin and padding to percentage instead of pixels? Uh, this is for uh, mobile responsive design. Um, the percentage is a relative unit relative to the, the column that it's in. So the moment that the screen size changes, the, the, the padding itself will, uh, will, be re will, will uh, change relative to the, the column size, which is a very good for a responsive, uh, responsive editing. So the responsive behavior is, um, is uh, you, don't, you don't have to tweak that too much. Uh, so that's why uh, I use the percentage. Um, let's have a look. Leo, Leo August, with all the changes that you made, does it make sense uh, to save or publish every now and then in case of a crash or a similar event? So it's, uh, your work is automatically been saved. Sorry, I didn't mention it. It's uh, automatically been saved. Uh, you can also save uh, as draft uh, every now and then if you want to. But uh, as I mentioned before, we've got the history over here. With As you can see, I've been working now for think about an hour maybe we can see all of the edits that I made you can see I edited the label and the form I I I moved the section around I changed the background all of these things I can go back to them and um, so I can really uh, control exactly what uh, what happened so you don't have to be afraid that uh, something would got lost because of a crash um, okay great so let's go back I'll go ahead and close the navigator I'll go ahead and close the navigator and I'll go back to uh, the desktop mode. Uh, and now that we've finished creating our page, uh, I'll go ahead and hit publish. And uh, we can preview, we can see our live page over here. And as you can see, it works. We can just drop down like so. Uh, here we've got all the sections that we made and everything looks great. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, another thing that we can do in the save options is we can save this uh, entire page as a template in our library. Uh, so I can call this a landing page, landing page uh, template. Okay. Um, and then it's in my library. So I can quickly uh, reuse it and create uh, other pages over here. Um, and I can just insert that uh, on the fly. So I can really create uh, a lot of pages and it will save you a lot of time. Uh, setting that up from uh, from the, from the from the go. Um, also, another thing you can do is you can save uh, sections as templates. So I can go just right click a section. I want to save this contact us uh, uh, form uh, section. I want to save it as a template. So I just right click that and say I'll just save it as a form template. And I can just reuse it as well. As you can see, it shows over here. And if I want to add a new section on a new page somewhere else, you know, I can just I can go ahead and select my library and my templates, and I'll just go ahead and insert it. And the moment that I insert it, it's it will just show. So that's really great. And I'll go ahead and delete this. Um, another cool uh, tool that you can use, by the way, is the Finder. Okay, I don't know if you uh, a lot of you know about it or if you use it or not. I use it a lot to in, uh, improve my workflow. You can use it with Command E or uh, uh, Control E if you're a PC user, and um, you know I use it to search for uh, for things that I want to do or places I want to go. Uh, it essentially is a search bar that offers a very easy navigation between different pages uh, and a lot of different dashboard settings, so you don't have to go back to the dashboard and and, and search uh, for things. Uh, for example, I can go ahead and uh, and uh, and type Add New, and very easily I can go ahead and create a new page. Um, and and there are a lot of other things that uh, that you can do. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the webinar. Uh, I'll go ahead and 
bring myself back, like so. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There really is so much more that we can learn. Uh, and Elemental Pro uh, really provides you with a lot of tools to create highly converting landing pages, uh, as well as fully fledged websites, such as the form widget that I mentioned before, motion effects to really help bring your design to life, uh, pop-ups uh, to keep your visitors engaged, a theme builder to visually customize your website's headers, footers, uh, archive pages, single posts, uh, and a lot of other areas on your site, uh, and a lot more. Um, so I think, I think you're ready to take your first steps with, uh, with Elementor and uh, you know, create your own stunning uh, landing pages and proudly publish them. Um, I'd like to invite you to join uh, our Facebook group with loads of helpful tips and tricks. Uh, also become a, 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 a part of our huge elemental community full of like-minded web creators. Uh, everybody's helping each other out, uh, becoming better uh, at, at what they do. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel full of all types of tutorials to really help you master your, uh, your elemental skills. Uh, and lastly, also check out our website. Uh, check out the Help Center for easy access, uh, the knowledge base, uh, FAQs, docs, uh, and, and a lot more. Um, lastly, I'd like to remind you that you can uh, re-watch this webinar. It's going to be a video. It's going to be on our channel. Uh, we'll send you a link to the materials to uh, create this landing page. So feel free to re-watch it and recreate the page step by step. Uh, and then you can also apply these skills to create your own attractive converting landing pages uh, for all types of business. Uh, if it's a hospitality industry, restaurants, software uh, companies, gyms, uh, e-commerce, uh, a lot more. Uh, so I wish you good luck and uh, most of all, um, enjoy being creative, very important. Thanks for tuning in and ciao for now.